Uh, welcome. I'm going to be talking about the physics of a ladder. Uh, this is like a very common problem in a physics book. Um, let's say you have a firefighter who's going to climb up this ladder and um, the ground has a force of a coefficient of friction of 0.25, static friction of 0.25, and you'd like the ladder to stay put, of course. Um, we're going to make this wall frictionless as most physics books will do. So that's a frictionless wall. In other words, you don't need friction for this problem then. And then um, the ladder is going to be 500 newtons and it's 15 meters long. So from here to there is 15 meters long. Big, that's a long ladder. And then uh, the fireman initially is going to be four meters, standing four meters from the base of the ladder four meters um, up the ladder. So that's where his feet are, and we'll say that's where his weight is being applied. Now the firefighter has a weight of 800 newtons, not a mass of, that's like an 80 kilograms mass about. So that so the firefighter is 800 newtons, okay? And so they want you to find the vertical, it says find the vertical and horizontal uh, forces the ground exerts on the ladder. Okay, so this, this ladder is gonna be pushing up and it will be pushing um, that way. So we'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And you imagine if, um, like, if my phone is the wall, let's say my phone is the wall, and here's the ladder. This piece of foam is the ladder, and so it's going to be, you know, like that, propped up. Or if we look at it from the side point of view, there's the there's uh, the wall and the ladder will be propped up. Okay, now um, the second part of this problem then, what's going to happen is if the, if the ladder is propped up against the wall, if the firefighter keeps on climbing too high, there's a chance that the, that the, the ladder, because of the physics, the ladder's base is going to just slide out from underneath and it's going to slide out and probably the firefighter's going to get hurt because get the ladder's going to fall. So it's going to slide out. So you have to be careful when you climb a ladder. As you climb the ladder, the physics kind of changes. And so you can, you can um, have that ladder slide out from underneath you. Okay, that will be the second problem I do in the same video. So the second problem I'm going to do is going to be what it's going to be. Um, what is... The farthest distance the firefighter can climb up the ladder without it slipping out from underneath. Okay? All right, so the way you do this first problem, though, to get these forces from, from, that are on this ladder, is I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the ladder. I'm going to put the forces where they actually occur on the ladder. And then um, I'm just going to apply the... the Conditions for static equilibrium, which is all the forces in the x-direction got to be zero, all the forces in the y-direction have to be zero, and all the torques have to be zero around any axis that you choose. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. So here's my ladder. Uh, it's a, it makes a 60-degree angle with the ground, with the horizontal. And let's go ahead and draw all the forces that are on this then. So the ladder itself is, uh, it weighs 500 newtons, and that's going to be right at the center of mass. So I'll put that right at the center of mass. This, remember, this is 15 meters long, and so this is, um, this is going to be right straight down, and it's going to be um, 500 newtons. So the ladder, we're told the ladder's weight is 500 newtons. Okay. And then um, we know that there's, let's see, you want to try and guess what, what other forces are on this ladder? You might put it on pause and come back. Okay, so here are the other forces. You got the weight of the firefighter pushing down. So the firefighter's 800 newtons. And then um, you have a uh, force upward from the ground, a normal force, let's say. I'm just going to say Fg sub y. And then um, there's a force of this wall. Now this wall here is frictionless, but it still can push. It must push that way. That's a normal force, we'll say. We'll just call that Fn from the wall. 
That's Fn from the wall. This is really Fn from the ground, Fg sub y from the ground. And then um, there's one more force because there has to be, otherwise what's negating this force going that way? You know, you, all the forces in the extra direction have to add up to zero. So that's a frictional force this way. That's the force of, of static friction. Okay. Now, um, so let's look at the forces in the y direction first. So all the forces in the y direction have to add up to zero. So that means that um, if these are all the forces, that means that the force from the weight of the ladder plus the weight of the man, so that adds up to 1300 newtons, that has to equal the weight of the ladder upward. So in other words, the net force in the y direction has to be zero. And because of that, then I'm going to say that um, FGY, the force from the ground in the y direction, is going to be um, 500 newtons plus 800 newtons. So that's 1300 newtons. So the force of the ground is 1300 newtons. Now, um, you might think that since you know that normal force, that you can now use the force of friction and find out what the force of friction is. But um, I want to remind you something about the force of friction. The force of static friction is less than, it's less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. So if you just multiply the, we know the coefficient of friction is 0.25. That's a known in here. So this is 0.25. But um, I can't just go ahead and multiply that by 1,300 newtons because um, it, it's not maxed out. We, we have no argument that says that's maxed out. So I need a different way to get that. Okay, so um, I know that whatever this force is, whatever the force of static friction is, it's got to equal that. These have the same magnitude. One's in the opposite direction of the other. Okay, so um, just analyzing forces is not going to get this done, this problem done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze torques. Now, I can use any axis I want to analyze the torque, but some axes are better than others. So um, it turns out that since this has two forces on it, I'm going to make my axes here to analyze torque. So I'm going to make my axes there. Then this, this force friction doesn't put a torque, nor does this, because the lever arm, how, it's, not, it, it's um, acting right through the axis. So there's no torque and no torque from these two forces. So then it's just a battle of these torques, um, the torque from these two and the torque from this one. Okay. Now, um, then I'll just reason that if if I get this force to be a certain value, then this force has to be its opposite value, or I'll just say it's the same magnitude. Okay, so I'm, I am going to find this force, but the way I'm going to find it is using this, let's say. There's a bunch of ways to do this problem, but this is one way to do it. Okay, so that's my axis. We say the axis is arbitrary, meaning I can pick whichever axis I want that makes the problem doable. Okay, so that's going to be my axis. And do you see that this is a battle of the torques then? So if this, is my, if this pen is the ladder right here, and it's rotating around this axis, around this axis, do you see how these two forces are trying to rotate it clockwise? And this force is trying to rotate it counterclockwise. So two of them are trying to rotate it clockwise, and the other two are trying to, ro the, the other one is trying to rotate it counterclockwise. So that's a battle of the torques and they ha it has to be equal otherwise it's going to rotate. Okay, So let me um, fill in the details for how the torques work out then. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera there. So the battle of the torques is going to be like this. I'll put it over here. So the net torque has to equal zero. So that means, get this over here. I'll start this here. I'll put this down here. So the torque, um, the torque from this one up here has to equal these two. So here it goes. Um, so this force is not perpendicular. This force is not perpendicular to the lever arm. So um, what I really want is this force then. I want to use the component that's in this direction. So that, that component. 
or I could say this component, either way. Okay, so if this is 60 degrees, then this right here is 60 degrees because alternate interior angles. That's 60 degrees right there, up there. So that means that um, I want to use the normal force times the sine of 60 degrees. So this, that, that force that's perpendicular is going to be the normal force times the sine of 60 degrees. Okay, that's just the force times the lever arm. Now the lever arm for this ladder, it's 15 meters. We told it that that's a given. So the ladder is 15 meters from the axis. Okay, so that's one that's one um, torque. That has to equal. It's going to battle, or it's going to equal the torque from the other two. So the torque from um, this one is. Let me let me find what what that force is. I could either find this component from there to like this this component, the one that's perpendicular, or I could put that down here. If I find this component here, don't think that it's closer to the axis. It isn't. It's still the same axis from where it's applied. So um, so to get this component, this 500 newtons, the, the component of the 500 newton force that's perpendicular, let's see, if this is 60, then this is 30. So then I would use the sine of 30 because it's the opposite side. So it's going to be... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out of room real fast here, so I'm going to put this down here. So I'm going to put this like this. So it's going to be 500 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. And then the lever arm is going to be half that distance because it's the center of mass. So 7.5 meters. Okay, that's one torque plus the next torque. I'm really uh, losing space here fast. So again, I'm going to put this down here. The next one is going to be the same thing. You got 800 newtons. And so um, I only want this component. And so that's going to be, if that's 60, this is 30. And so it's going to be um, 800 times the sine of 30. So 800 newtons times the sine of 30 times the lever arm. And the lever arm, in this case, we're told that he's four meters. The problem was that he's four meters from um, the base. So your problem might be different, but this one is it's four meters from the base. Okay, so with this crazy equation here, um, look at there's only one unknown. There's just the Fn is not known. Okay, so when you solve for that, you can solve for that. I won't, I won't go into how you solve for it, but you just solve for that. And um, it's going to give you, um, it's going to be 268 newtons, 268 newtons. So Fn from the wall is 268 newtons. Okay, so that's this force. So then we can reason that this force must also be 268 newtons because they're the only two forces in the x-direction. All right, uh, okay, now we're going to the second problem. The second problem is we have this person. Now our firefighter is going to um, start walking up the ladder and there'll be a point where the ladder has a chance of slipping out from underneath. In other words, what happens is the frictional force will get greater and greater and there'll be a point where no longer can the co then can the friction supply the needed force in order to stop this from sliding out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, that's that point when you're maxing out the friction. When you're maxing out the friction, that's, that's when this is going to start to slide out. So let's take a look at that. So we got these forces still. Let's see, I'll put them in green this time. So let's see, we got the weight of the ladder. Uh, that's still going to be 500 newtons. I'll put it over here this time. This is 500 newtons. And then there's going to be the person. Now, I don't know how far up they're going to be, but I'm just going to call that X. They're going to be, 
This is the weight of the person. Now the person's 800 newtons still. And so this, while this is, this is seven and a half meters, this we're going to call X. That's what we're trying to find in this problem. Okay. And then we have um, this force. And um, I think that's it. Oh no, it's, uh, we got the force of friction, which will be equal to that. And then we have the normal force. Okay, now the normal force, the normal force is still got to be 1300 newtons. Because the y forces haven't changed. Like you got two forces down, this has to be up 1300 newtons. Okay, so um, at this point though, I know what this force can be. This force, the maximum force is, when, when this is about to slip, we're at maximum force here. So the maximum force down there is equal to, it's actually equal to, because we're maxing out, 0.25, that's our, our coefficient of static friction, times the normal force, 1300 newtons. Okay, so um, it turns out that that force has to be equal to this force up here. So whatever this force, whatever this current turns out to be, it's going to be equal to that up here too. Okay, so um, it doesn't matter where I use the axis. Maybe I'll call this the axis again. That's going to be my axis. And the reason why I'm calling that the axis is, well, for one, these two forces don't provide torques then. And also, I want to know how far it is from the base, that what x is from the base. Okay, so the physics looks like this. We're going to um, do a, we're going to make sure all the torques add up to zero. So let's see, the torque, it's this one versus these two again. So let me uh, write the torque from this one. If this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees. So I want to use um, the, the force that's perpendicular, so it's this force or this force. And so if this is 60, this is 30. This is just showing you another way to do this. So that's 30 degrees. And so it would be, um, let's see, the torque from the wall is going to be 0.25, the coefficient of friction, times 1300 newtons. That's the, fric that's the friction force, the max it can be. So it's got to be the same as this one right here, times um, the cosine of 30 degrees. And now I'm going to say um, the lever arm for that. So this is just the force. That's just the, the component that's perpendicular to the lever arm, then times 15. So you see how that's now the torque from above? That's the torque from just the, from this above. So. Uh, this is the force. This gives you the component that's perpendicular to the lever arm. And then this is, um, the, the lever arm is 15 meters. We're just told that the ladder is that. That has to equal, and now let me, uh, I'm going to run out of room again, so I'm going to put this down over here, the torque from both of these. So let's see, 500 newtons. Um, let's see, we'll use this one this time. So we want this component right here, that component. And so um, if, this six, if this is 60, this is 30, so we're back to 60. So it would be the cosine of 60, because this is 60 again. See, 60, 30, so this is 60 again. So that would be cosine of 60. So 500 newtons, cosine of 60. And then times the lever arm. The lever arm, how far is it from the axis? It's seven and a half meters times. So that times seven and a half meters. Plus the torque from the other one. Now, um, that torque from the other one is going to be 800 newtons times. Now, again, we only want the component. So um, let's see. If this, if this is 800, that, uh, this is 60 again, that angle 60 again. See, 30, 60. So this component is, uh, is going to be 800 times the cosine of 60 degrees. 
So that's the force. And then the lever arm, I don't know, it's X. So do you see how I have only one unknown in that equation? I just don't know X. And so um, if you solve for this, and I, I won't take the time to solve for it, but if you take the time to solve for it, it comes out to be that in this case, for these numbers, it's about 5.87 meters. And so, um, so as this firefighter is walking up the ladder, maybe at two meters they're fine, three meters they're fine, but it, when it gets the this this um, distance from the axis, that ladder's going to fly out and the ladder's going to fall. Okay, so that's the physics of walking up a ladder. All right, thanks.